These interviews in no way reflect the views of Arrayus Productions. This project is in no way endorsed by Arrayus Productions. As students in a continuous state of learning and frequency accretion, we each hold our own unique perspective of the teachings and how they relate to our individual experiences. It is important for viewers to remember that we are in fact self-sovereign beings with free will expression and we each carry our own perceptual filters with potential for distortion. These interviews are intended to inspire and in no way should reflect upon Iesha, Arrayus Productions, or any of her work as there is no affiliation. More information on the Alhumbra Magistracy Council of Cosmenius, the Melchizedek Cloister Emerald Order, Tantriora, Tantriasia, and the Kelantic Science can be found in the provided links below. Anyway, 
but I will not test that. Yeah. We're not live now, are we? I hope not. Yeah, yeah, we are. Are we live now? Live <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's no. already streaming. When I okay, it. well then, there we go. <laughs> I so, can edit it and take down whatever, though. It's fine. Take down that. Take oh. down the first five minutes. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I didn't give you a heads up. Sorry. Okay. Jeez. Oh, so, anyways, but yes, um, what we would like to talk. Yes, no. So there's a there's a lot of stuff going on right now, and yeah. it is very. Um, there's lots of energetic stuff going on right now, and there's lots of you know other things going on right now. So it's mm -hmm. there's a lot. Yeah. So what do you see in the? How do you see this all linked with chaos and the caverns, etc. KDVL. Well, I. You know, honestly, the longer Yesha is gone, the more I kind of branch off and start doing my own thing. Yeah. Um, I've got my own little way of learning things and so forth. I triturate medicines, and if you go long enough doing that, ain't, things start coming to see you. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, be, you start like getting all these images in your head, and you start getting these downloads and these informations and so forth. So I've been doing a lot of that lately. Uh, I've been doing a lot of work with no sodes and a lot of work with uh, remedies for drainage. So just kind of getting toxins out of the body and so forth, and a lot of work on um, uh, remedies for ver for a number of health problems that are kind of newly popping up. Have you treated COVID? Been able to help people? Uh, I am not going to answer that. No, okay. I, my patients' uh, health problems are confidential, of course. Right. So I will not be mentioning on the problems they do or do not have. Um, but um, I will say that many of my colleagues elsewhere in the world, where they are legally able to talk about such things and have the scope of practice to do that, have been treating COVID uh, with um, many natural methods quite successfully. Okay. Yes. So like a bunch of my colleagues in the States have been doing a lot of good work with hydrotherapy from it when they're in like very well licensed states like Washington and Oregon and so forth. A number of my colleagues in India have been treating uh, COVID with homeopathy with great success. Divya Chabra, who's one of my teachers, she had about a thousand uh, Delta patients um, from when Delta really cropped up in India to the present day. And out of those thousand, about four of them had to be hospitalized and none died. Using can her, you, can you talk about what you're seeing? The difference with this Delta variant, like, is there a major difference from what you're seeing? I haven't seen like Delta cases so far, so I don't know um, how. i like, none of my patients have gotten it so far. I mean, it's it's like it's coming. We're having a lot more active cases in Alberta right now, so like I absolutely know it's coming, but uh, I cannot comment as to the difference right this minute. Mm -hmm. Just from what you're hearing, Anything? yeah. From what I'm hearing, um, from what I'm hearing, it seems to be a little bit more upper respiratory tract infection. So, like COVID, you know, it, COVID, like the original strain, went deep. It went into the brain, so you had like the loss of taste and smell. It went into the lungs, and you know, you had this cough. This one seems to be a lot more superficial. So, um, it seems to be a lot more like eye symptoms, nose symptoms. Like uh, one of the symptoms that I'm hearing pop up 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 and again and again and again is allergies. Like people who get a really sudden allergy attack, particularly when their allergies were under control or alternately if they've never had allergies before. That seems to be a thing that's common with Delta. That's what I'm hearing okay. from the uh, NDs who are treating this and so forth. Okay. Yeah, the kids just had something for like a week and it, it was kind of like allergies, like the, yeah. the like their throat, scratchy, dry sinus stuff and a cough. Yeah, so. it, it might have been that. It might have been something else. I don't know, Chris. But that's that's kind of what's been going on with that's kind of what's been going on there. Mm -hmm. So um, they, were hanging, they got it interestingly enough uh, to sleep over with the kid that was vaccinated. Now, mm. I'm not going to go into all the stories about the shedding stuff, but it seriously had me wondering because he got sick that night. They mm -hmm. came back fine, and then it was like a day later they started having weird symptoms, and they haven't been sick in forever. My kids don't get sick that often. Yeah. So. so I will say I'm not fond of the shedding theory, the, the yeah, theory that we're shedding either. particles, but there's something going on there. There's some, I, I suspect it's energetic. There's some kind of energetic transmission that occurs and some people are vulnerable to. Okay. I've right. seen, I have seen cases of that. 
uh, and um, been treating it with with success. So um, that's that's kind of a, so. There's I'm not fond of the, the the shedding idea that the conspiracy community is kind of you know really latched onto, but there's something going on with this this phenomenon. Like people are noticing an effect, um, yeah. even if they haven't taken this that particular intervention. Women and there cycles are, and everything. Uh, Right. Yeah, so th- there's something going on there. I just yeah. don't know what it is. I suspect it's energetic. Okay. Enough, yeah. Enough energetic. But. Mm-hmm. but yeah, no, it's been so in my studies and in everything else, I've come to a certain amount of understanding of the present situation and so forth. And I, uh, you know, perhaps one of the biggest things I've known is that, you know, mm-hmm this greater i'm going to call it evolutionary or christic enterprise really is it it does go beyond deisha like there's more people out there doing it than just her i don't think she stopped by any means but there's other groups and other people and you know involved in kind of moving this agenda along and it is moving along it's just perhaps less centrally focused on her and what whatever she's up to at the moment well doing it like in their own way i guess yeah. taking the material i've just kind of seen a theme that okay they're adopting a lot of chaos terminology and themes and different things but there there's always like well, not always but to most of the groups that have popped up recently it seems like there's just like additives and price tags added mm. to it you know yeah no i i've seen a bunch of people try to monetize uh k their own version of ks which is you know super super shady uh i don't approve of that i'm speaking however about something different i think i'm speaking in terms of just like a broader movement that probably doesn't even adopt the uh any like has no idea about ks doesn't adopt any oh. of the language of it or and so forth I'm seeing a lot of that. Like I'm seeing a lot of individuals who are really quite clearly adopting this press, this um, I'm going to say broader chaos narrative of bringing in and embodying higher energies as opposed to the more traditional, um, you know, kind of white dragon, uh, green dragon doctrines where, you know, you just float off somewhere and then you go and ascend and, you know, see you later mortals, that kind of thing. Um, There's a lot yeah, no, that, there's that. There's that kind of, there's that kind of like white that I I call that the white dragon, green dragon narrative. They're kind of white mystery school, kind of that broader term. That's that's their thing. They want to get off the planet and leave and you know go go and do their own thing, um, as opposed to the more Christic, you might say, blue perspective, which is to bring in these higher energies, turn them on again, and let the spontaneous evolution of life kind of unfold the way you want it to. There's, there's not a controlling aspect to it. Well, bringing so, in the energies by doing the work, right? Like yeah. doing the self healing. Well, yeah, no. And that's the thing. So I'm finding a lot of people are kind of more and more embracing that and uh, so forth. And quite often outside of knowledge of, of conscious knowledge of chaos. I think a lot of people are kind of doing their own thing there. Pro- probably being some way connected to like you know the energies of chaos but doing it without conscious knowledge and then their own way and from their own viewpoint and everything else like that you know it it honestly seems to me right now that you know you can in my view that there are three big mystery schools there's kind of like i call it a shadow mystery school there's a white or a false light mystery school and then there's a blue mystery school and chaos was kind of one of that one of the portions of that blue one, that one dedicated towards, you know, life is unfolding. It is evolving in its own natural way back to this kind of perfection. How do we maintain that? How do we do that optimally? How do we safeguard that natural evolutionary process as opposed to the false light one? We're going to make it evolve this way. And, you know, the shadow one, well, we're going to make it evolve that way. Both of those are trying to create their own kind of mini creations there as opposed to let's get back to the original creation we all came from through this natural evolutionary process. And it seems to me that chaos was uh, one section of that larger, of that larger blue movement. It's are just you my, able, that. Are you able to list, list any like examples, any movements that you're seeing by name at all? The trituration movement in homeopathy. Okay. All right. The vitalistic movement in naturopathic medicine. They are not, 
so much spiritual movements. They are, you know, there are movements that I'm familiar with. I'm sure there are spiritual movements that way, but they are, um, in my view, those two movements are, um, those two movements are very clearly connected with that energy. And what about like the other, uh, movements surrounding it and stuff? What are you seeing with, that? Uh, like around what, chaos? Around chaos? Most of the time. All right. So most of the, there are, there are people who do, you know, get a little chaos and they sincerely draw upon it and they're teaching and everything else like that. And most importantly, they goddamn cite things. Like yeah. citation is there. Make or break. <laughs> well, no, there's this book called History of the Western Chakra System, and it's such a good book because it cites things. He goes back and actually goes to the original sources. Um you know, a lot of theosophists are very scholarly and do that. And and the and the guy who wrote this book, his name I, I can't remember his name right now, but he he goes and he cur- turns up that he comes and up with this term called source amnesia, where people clearly got this information from this source, but they never cite it, and and that's bullshit. So there are a lot of people who are sincerely citing Eisha, and I often think that many in the shield and many and maybe Eisha herself kind of means that her her copyright means that she owns the information. No one else can use it, and and that's not how copyright works. Um, it copyright just means you own a particular image or you intellectual know, copyright. Yeah, so other people can draw upon that in their own way if they cite properly and they don't like steal an image or something like that. So, um, you know, that's perfectly legitimate and that's part of the Western intellectual tradition. And I, I think it's good, uh, if you cite it. So if you are having a spiritual tradition and you're like, you know what, this is a thing that Iesha Dean came or Iesha Ashiana Reyes, formerly Ashiana Dean came up with, um, then, you know, the, oh, that's perfectly fine and dandy. But if you're kind of presenting this as something that you came up with yourself, I'm not going to get behind you on that. Yeah. So, so I'm seeing a lot of the the pseudo chaos things they're doing. They're doing the source amnesia and they're trying to pass up their own thing. And um, you know that's not cool. What are you seeing spreading more rapidly? Like the authentic groups of people sourcing? Or are you seeing like the business side? People just trying to latch on and make money. Oh, the business side, absolutely. Because spreading the authentic- faster. The authentic groups are at a standstill, Chris. Like the people who are at the forefront of chaos the whole time, who actually went to the active workshops and everything, and you know really helped during that you know 2010, you know, or maybe even earlier that 1998 to like 2014 period when things were, or 2015 period. Uh, there, we're all just doing our own thing now because the yeah. is not talking anymore. The uh, people who are recycling the old stuff and kind of going for naive, um, naive people to kind of draw them in, they're pretty active. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Um, the That larger blue mission that I talked about, that larger kind of thing, that's still going strong and it's doing quite well uh, considering. But chaos is a subsection of it is not, you know, it's pretty stagnant. If Narration never comes back. It'll probably dissolve, and all the people will go off and do on their own things for the rest of our lives. Well, from my view, it looks like it's spreading like rapidly, especially <laughs> like through Instagram. There's like conduits of reaching like certain audiences and stuff. Mm-hmm. People are putting together videos, like real high quality video excerpts mm-hmm. that are reaching a lot of people. You know, so it feels oh, like there's an influx of it. Oh, that's good. There may be just another group of people coming in right now. There may be another influx, and that would be nice. Yeah. Mm. But it's still like the, there's still like the com- campaigns like against Eisha, the new work. There's still that that's still ongoing, you know? No, it's really weird. I never really quite understood that because, you know, I, I know that there's people, really good, legitimate people like Noel like Noel Tobin, you know, who just, you know, plasma and the later energies are not their thing. And, you know, I can respect that. You know, if it's not their thing, it's not their thing. And there's other people who are like, you know, oh, you know, the earlier work was fallen and everything else. And, you know, the newer work is not their thing. And and that I'm kind of like, no, I think you might have a problem and so forth. But, um, you know, I see the work in a bit of a different way. So I, I definitely divide Eisha's work up into a number of phases and each phase kind of brought in a different level of energy different level of anatomy would you say of the our dna template 
I would say it's a different level of energy. So um, in my view, the light and the, so this is how I see the energetic physiology of the human. We have the physical body and we have the vitality. The vitality is like all of the energies smushed together, regulating the physical. And then we have a body that's made out of this particular spectrum of energies. We call it the light body. Then we have a body made out of this other spectrum of energies, the Rasha body. Light bodies then, like chakras. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. It's got, yeah, and so forth. Then we've got, you know, the spirit body, the um, plasma body, and so forth. Due to our own ill health, um, they're all separate. Ideally, they're all kind of, as you incarnate, they all kind of merge together into the vitality and become this one unified energetic body. And if you get everything in there, you kind of recreate that perfect eternal energy in yourself. So you merge them all together. And that's, there's really two things in, or two, <laughs> two things in chaos that really comes in. The first of which is creating this complete spectrum of energy, like going in like, Oh, this is missing. This is missing. This is reverse. This is reverse. Like we we've done this again and again, here's the anatomy. Here's the energy spectrums that it channels. This is what's wrong with it. And so forth. That has been a consistent thing in chaos. And the other thing is, the combining of these different things together into a greater unified whole. Like originally in the slider series, we were combining the light, um, the spirit and the Rasha bodies, and they called it the Jade body. Then we started adding some plasma and it's the luminary body. And then we started the true Abada body. And now it's the Urale body. So every time they bring in some new energies, they confusingly change the name, but it's the same concept. You're smushing all these things together and together they create this new greater whole. And that's what I think it's about. Now, I don't think we're in any way done. Um, and many people in chaos and, you know, EH in particular do have this tendency to like, oh my God, this is the next best thing. This is it. We found it 20 minutes later. Oh my God. Like there's, there's like, come on people. We've yeah. done this a bunch of times before. There's, there's something else. We're working on this now. We'll work on something later if we get there considering how the how kgdl3 is going if we get there is a bit of a question now but, but real quick so talking about anatomy and the plasma body we did take kind of a leap with the alhambra and this this D, the 48 strand dna plasma yeah. template yeah. like that was a kind of a big leap right so we were at 48 strands before we were we jumped jumped to 144 strains but you know well from august 2012 it says 48 strand right yeah did it go? She, said, she said in the in the journey it was 144 okay. so we'd kind of upgraded during the um the uh 12 tribes to 48 so if you were an indigo starting you know okay. kind of starting in the earlier work it was 24 with a couple of 48 thing people and then during the 12 tribes um period like slight early sliders period it was that and then uh -huh. later sliders it was um 144 and, you know god but knows what we're Wow. But this is where the big fail-safe host came in, like of yep. people making the kind of a decision, like a deciding point. Are you going to accept the host? That's been thrown around the word accept, you know? Like, are you yeah. going to accept the this DNA plasma upgrade, you know, and this this template thing? There was definitely yep. a noticeable leap to that, and accepting the Alhumbra and everything. Yeah, I think that is a, an American thing. So it kind of, it really reminds me of those like American churches where, you know, you got to accept Jesus into your life. Yeah. No, je suis canadien. I don't think that way. Um, to me, it wasn't about accepting this group of people or that group of people. I mean, I have made friends with the Alhambra. They are, they are, you know, generally some of them I like and some of them I don't like and so forth. But um, what I did, what I, the way I interpret it is, is that there is a, Pla there was always a plasma body like I came down from there I had a plasma body with at one point with 144 you know strand templates or however you want to think of that or divide that up and that that's just hooking me back up to that thing that I kind of turned off for a little while to cram myself into a human body but it only came online with the earth's activations like she's explained the Maharic shield the planetary shields like you can't activate your Maharic shield without the planet shield activated that didn't happen until 2000 right so 2012 who the fuck says you can't now my i have a different school of well, all of the mechanics of ks say you can't right they say but you can't I, I say that i say that i i have a different interpretation of that so in my view there are what we've done in ks was 
something that previously you could only do with a great deal of effort and guidance. Those energies are perfectly accessible if you go outside of your body and you go and get them. It's like, I'm going to journey to this area and you've got the range and everything. I'm going to journey to this area. It's got 12, you know, 12 plus energy. I'm going to turn on my own personal 12 um, chakras and everything else. I'm going to bring in that light body, 12 prime energy. I call it prime, that kind of, you know, energy and everything. And then boop, I'm back in my body. <laughs> I think it's possible to do that. And I think it was possible to do that. Whether you're, you know, an initiate with, if you are um, going on a journey and you're going back to time when earth had a 12, like, you know, to before the, um, the fall of Brennaway and so forth, you could, you could have done that. You could have done that. You could have gone and done a light body journey on Earth back to when there was 12 prime energy, sucked some of it up, used it to activate your own chakras to bring in that energy, and then poof. And it would hold even though the planet hadn't activated yet. It would have been harder, but you could have done it. Okay. Because, I mean, KS is saying anything that the planet has, you have. Like, you got the well, tilt, you got the wobble, you got the Van Allen belt, you got all the distortions. There's a big entrainment field there. But you could have done it. And the it thing would have is, helped. The thing is, Chris, what KS has done, which is really unprecedented, is that KS has taken that previously individualized process and done it on a planetary scale. We've taken those energies and used them to turn on planetary chakras, and all of a sudden that energy is circulating into the planet again. And hey, oh my God, that entrainment thing ain't so bad. Now the planet's kind of going through its own process as well. That is the brilliant part of it. We like chaos is one of the first groups to really take that and really like use that to turn on planetary chakras and start getting the planetary energetic system instead of just the individual going. That was an era, though. Now she's explaining the activations will happen with or without us on this planet. And I'm we sure can. What's up? I'm sure they will. And we can pick up the frequencies from the earth instead of like running to this grid and we got to hurry up and do that. They're just popping on. Like we don't mm -hmm. even need to be here. Right? Yeah. That's uh, post 2012. It's been explained well, like that. The interpretation there as well. And, you know, I think we can speed it up and balance it considerably by being in a particular place or going to a particular thing. But yeah, no, I said so we can we help climate change like like uh, the cataclysm that changes well, that the my, earth and stuff my hope is that we can avert that kind of thing you know that was all i mean i think humans were already kind of doing that like there really was something to that old you know that old uh, mandate of heaven idea in um not only chinese but like the chinese were the most the only surviving culture with it but you know most ancient cultures had this idea that you know things were right with the state with you know society disasters happened, you know, bad stuff happened, and then you fixed it and like, okay, things are good again. Like, that's this, a very similar concept. If the energetic field society is creating is out of balance, bad things are going to happen. You fix that. It's, it's a very similar concept. So I'm hopeful that of the energies that we run can stabilize things considerably. But, you know, it's not really been helping so far lately. So there must be some pretty bad stuff going on. So or, the caverns deal... It's, I mean, some, I think you even mentioned this like a few years ago when we talked about how you had kind of going along with what you're saying now that you can access things even without them being open or activated on the planet level. What are you yep. feeling? Because it's not like officially announced that those caverns are accessible right now, as far as I know, unless she's, I missed something. The uh, caverns well, are not open. Right? I, I don't think, I don't think you've missed anything, Chris. Um, no, I think it's always been possible for an individual if they know where they're going and they know how to get there and, you know, they got the keys and, you know, they got, you know, they, they give the, um, you know, the people will let them in and so forth. I think it's always been possible to go to those places, receive those energies and like activate your own chakras to bring in those particular energies. Well, let me ask you like this and why are they not accessible on a wider level or even officially like? Why is she not saying, okay, now they're open, now we can take journeys there? Why are they, why, why is that? Why indeed? It's a good question. I think the KS movement, the KS experiment, you might call it, has a definite plan. There was, from the onset, they were just like, we want to do this, we want to do this, we want to do this. And there was, there was like a sequence to it and certain conditions being needed to do certain things and so forth. And um, you can hear this, like, you know, 
one of the more interesting things that um, Aisha said, I think it was in April 2013, was she said that Failsafe was always planning, like there was always a plan to call Failsafe. It wasn't like this thing that happened because of a tragedy or something like that. She like she's like, yeah, after 2012 or on 2012, like December in 2012, we were going to call Failsafe regardless of what happened. And then we just had to call it early because because things happened. Even the so, plates were mentioned in Voyagers too. FOL9. Alhumbra had been mentioned before. Yeah, no. So there was always a plan. And, um, you know, for whatever reason, this plan, ha- the the plan for the KS group has gotten derailed. And I don't, I'm actually not familiar why that is. I don't think I'm privy to that information. I just know I've, there's other plans elsewhere in the world and elsewhere within this larger blue Can movement you, wait. KS part of that I carry on with. How, okay, so the plans for the KS group, can you expand on that? I can't. How they've Chris. been derailed, like what do you mean? Yeah. Like us doing grid work or what do you, it's going to be? And um, there's a plan for like, you know, continuous energy development and things like that. And, you know, we're not doing it. Us like, as a group, like meeting and being functional. Yeah. Getting taught, learning, turning on consciously all of our things. So it's not organically happening how it was meant to happen right now. I think that they, well, you know, it was a plan. It was an active enterprise. Like there was active will and intent and like doing things going on. I mean, God, I mean, I'm at like, is this, is this just it? Is that the end of chaos? And we'll just go and drink margaritas on the beach for the rest of our lives and passively wait for our energetic bodies to turn on. I'm not doing that. That's, well, what about no. the, did you do the Mahajra drama? Activation yes. thing. That I wasn't have, that long ago, right? She popped on. We did that. I have literally done almost every single one of them. I think I've done every workshop and every activation and so forth. So how was the last? Like, what did you feel from the last updates and journey, it was Mahadra? It was nice. Resonated. Everything felt good. I enjoyed it. Turned on another piece. So okay. and oh no, I was just. And you said. I think you had mentioned this before, like you have access to caverns. Can you expand on that? So what caverns, the like crystal caverns, like KDDL three that yeah. haven't opened or, well, it's not, I don't think that I, I don't know if the places that I go are the ones that people are going to go in KDDL three whenever we get done that. Okay. I don't so know. It might not have been the cal- crystal caverns. Yeah, no, but there's lots of places out there with energies that I think we're going to work our way up to at some point. And, you know, I maybe they are the ones and maybe I just get to go like I, I typically get activations earlier. Like, you know, I will notice something and then six months later. So back when workshops were a thing, I would get an activation. I'm like, oh, this happened. And then six months later, Yasha would talk about it in her in her um, in like you know, her workshops or whatever. So I typically get them a little early, um, you know. Yeah. So that's, I'm not, so maybe I'm just getting early access just cause I'm special, but you know, I, I say that jokingly, but, um, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of the thing. I mean, those energies are out there. It's just which ones there's lots of energies out there. Which ones do you want to incorporate? Which kind of chakras do you turn on? Is there an order? There is an order. And like, how do you figure it out? Where do you go and get these energies? That's, those are all things that Aisha really helped us with. Well, it's kind of, kind of reminds me of like the, I think it's like the three day deal security clearance. Like whenever Mm -hmm. she's translating off the plates Mm -hmm. that it's like three days to distribute through the planetary shields. Mm -hmm. And there's kind of an ongoing debate of this of people saying, Oh, well I can read the plates myself. I can access that and pull it out of the ethers. And, and my, my response is that is, you can, but it's gone through a checkerboard matrix, it's diced up, you're getting little fragments, maybe reverse pieces that have gone through the shields. Well, I mean, this is the thing. I mean, I mean, the ultimate test, of course, would be, is the stuff you're getting good like Yeisha's? I mean, right. it's not the same. I haven't seen that. Have, you're going to have your own... Uh, you're going to have your own style, your own spin. Well, they're like, saying this with her information. They're saying that they got it also or something, that they translated it, you know, they, after. They did, it's always conveniently after she's already presented. Isn't that convenient? Yes. So, I mean, you know, I make no claims to reading the plates or anything. Like when I get information, I go and do my trituration process and I learn from the plant or the mineral or the animal or the bacteria or the virus or whatever it is. And you go up for a high, high enough amount, you get information that, honestly looks a lot like the ks stuff it just looks like the way i it 
would percolate in my brain. So, yeah, I make no claims towards reading any, uh, KD, uh, any, you know, specific, uh, oh God, what are those called? The Alhambra plates or what were the other ones? The oh, CDT yes, plates. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I, I make no claims to reading those. When I get information, I get it from somewhere else. So, so what about, uh, like the ongoing stuff that's supposed to be happening from Arcturus, Phantom Arcturus, Checkerboard Matrix, Trumpets. Yeah. What are you seeing? With all, what have you experienced with that? I think we're in the final rounds right now, up to 2023 uh, in the split. Six. So for those of you who don't know, Yesha kind of did a really good thing um, in 2017, and she gave us a little um, session on the trumpet pulses. So the trumpet pulses were something, our series of energetic, well, the Jehovian seals are a series of energetic implants on the planet that are not natural. They're not supposed to be there. Uh, they got activated and each one kind of anchors a pulse that spreads this really ucky energy out into the planet. And, you know, number one, I remember exactly the moment it anchored. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night in November in 2016 and I, you know, woke up and I was just like, what the shit just happened? And I'm like, okay, I can't get back to sleep. Turn on the TV Oh, Trump, just, they just called the election for Trump. I'm like, oh, okay, that's what happened. That was the first um, one, right, on that yeah, night? Yeah, that was the first one. And, you know, I know many people in KS have an affinity for that. They have got an affinity for those, um, those, you know, that kind of political thing. Yeah, and, you know, like the I, white hats and everything. Yeah, yeah, I'm, you know, hooray for you all. Um, but, you know. You don't like, resonate with that. They're like, oh, no, Trump came in to fight the Trumpets. I'm like, you know, it's the same goddamn name. Like, Come on, mm. I'm not going to comment. So there's on that. nothing happening with that, with oh, what no, he was so, has started so or anything. I did a I did a remedy that was very deeply um, linked to the destiny of the United States. I did cinchona officinalis. So cinchona officinalis or cinchona bark was this medicine that they used to make a a, a lot of drugs like quinine and now modern derivatives like hydroxychloroquine. Hmm. Uh, who that um, in in the in the nineteenth century in the United States, that was they that was just like they threw it at people like candy. Like it was the drug that they used for everything. It was their general anti inflammatory and everything else, to the extent that there was a disease that was very well understood called Sinchonism from the overdosing of it. Any um, link to artificial light Shona? <laughs> Shona? Sounds the same. Very well be. But um that was so we did me and some friends did this remedy. And uh, we did it up to C12. We found out a lot about the difference between chronic and acute inflammation and a lot about the destiny of the United States and so forth. Um, so what the is United C12 States, again? Hmm? What is C12 again? Oh, so, um, so um, when you triturate a substance, you spend an hour doing – so you spend an hour kind of grinding and scraping it in a mortar and pestle. And if you're good at it – I'm really good uh, – they um, – you will get information on that. You'll get physical symptoms that the remedy can treat. You'll get a lot of information about the the things the remedy has to do with on a higher level. The higher you go, the kind of broader, um, the more interesting the inter the information is. C12 is doing this for 12 hours. Um, usually that's where I stop, but for this one we went up to C16. So you know, C1 to four is individual. Five to eight is more social collective. 9 to 12 is planetary, and 13 to 16 is a bit more solar system-y. Okay. So, it's the amount of time that you're spending. Different. Now, for those of you who do use homeopathy, this is different than potency. So, like a C200 has not been ground for, like it's different. I, I'm sorry that it's confusing. The Germans came it up. I would have said, you know, use T1, T2, and so forth. They didn't ask me. So, there's C that refers to potency scale, and C that refers to trituration, and they are different and don't mix them up. Okay, I'm pointing at you, people out there in YouTube land or, or, or Facebook land or wherever we're talking. Don't mix them up. Rumble, <laughs> I go on Rumble. Now. Oh, there we go. So, um, but yeah, no, that's that's the thing. So uh, we took it up there and we saw some. I saw something that was quite horrifying. So I saw they, there is an artificial energy structure that spans the planet, very similar to the natural one called the net. It's artificial. It's you know bunch of various beings are fighting over control of it and so forth and there is the organic energy structure the called, nadirian electro uh, are you talking about the net net so there's the net 
artificial energy structure that spans the planet and is, you know, inimical to organic life. What does it stand for again? Niberian? Bureau and Electrostatic Grid. Something, I, don't know. Yeah. I call okay. it the net. All right. Then there's the grid, the organic energy structure of the planet that is quite compatible with organic life. So, and would this those, be linked with like the crystal spiral? Anyway? Yeah, yeah. This, okay. It run, it Eternal runs on, life connection. Yeah. So there's an organic and an inorganic energetic system on the planet. And what we found out by doing Sinchona, with, there was kind of a dormant one that was kind of holding them together and holding them together but apart. There was this whole dormant energy system and that it was actually being activated by those trumpet pulses. So they started in 2016 with number one and a new one happens every year and there's seven. I actually think that they had intended them there for, for there to be more, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. So anyway, when they were fully activated, um, they were going to actually kind of take over the organic grid and merge the organic grid and the inorganic grid together and create this new unified energy field of horror. They called it a sanctuary planet, at least in my my kind of thing about that. So they kind of would take over the whole energy field of the planet and then um, the higher beings that um, – kind of the the false light and the shadow mystery schools both kind of serve and worship uh, you ever you ever see like lovecraftian beings and so forth like thulu and you know that kind of thing like they look like that they're they're freaky uh they would actually be able to manifest in this universe and they would come here to this sanctuary planet and live and do their thing and both of those um mystery schools the kind of false light shadow um schools would come and um they would both learn from them here because that's a very rare thing real that quick was, is any of this linked in with the thea code and the moon and all that i expect issues? it would be, yes okay same contraption like the beast machine I thing expect it would be maybe it's not the exact same thing i haven't investigated the thea code too much but yeah so anyway me and some friends these are friends who had nothing to do with ks they're just you know friends i make remedies with we all and you know they are freaking the fuck out over this they are just like jesus paul what's going on because when you're when you're triturating something and you get energy it is like or information it is tangibly real you can perceive it and like it is true even if it is an abstract concept so they're all doing this and they're like paul what the shit is going on i'm like okay i'm, I'm fine i'm fine we're good we're good we can handle this and we went it up to C16 and our energy doing this really kind of cracked that uh, shell, that little thing. Maybe it is the shell of contention, but it really cracked that energetic field and so forth. Uh, so like that mer that forced merger and turning Earth into their sanctuary planet is not you know, it's not going to happen. That's not a possibility for them anymore. That energetic system that was holding the grid and the, the organic grid and the inorganic net apart was kind of fractured. And now they're, you know, fighting. They're both directly contacting now. So they are conflicting much more directly now. But um, that, that part in potential thing isn't happening. Did you witness now, this or did, were you a part of stopping this? Or I'm trying to understand. Did it. We did it. How many people were in this? Five. You guys all just like focused and this. no, the rem we we made the remedy and the oh, remedy, remedy doing the remedy did this. Okay, so it's like bringing a new element here that just kind of a new higher energy that was capable of dissolving that. Okay. See what I told you about things going on outside of chaos, Chris. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot. You know, I mean, everybody's got their own. I mean, I think that it's probably all true. Like everybody's ha has their own route of passage here during this yeah. time, you know. You know, Aisha was Aisha was a teacher, and many of us have passed the class. So, what about the orbing thing? Oh, I can't do that yet. I'll tell you when I can. I'll come visit you. Okay. So you have any like dream give time? Yeah, give me your. I will orb my ass over to your house. We'll have a nice beer. It'll be great. <laughs> so, Got a balcony. <laughs> there we go. I would go. I mean, I'm sure my first time I'll show up naked. So just get me like a, a pair of shorts. I got kids. <laughs> yeah. Right. But um, no, that. So I can't do that yet. But so anyway, that trituration was not done yet because that particular third energetic structure was indeed ruined and destroyed and is gradually degrading. Those trumpet pulses that it was used, turning on in and of itself, those structures still remain and they're still turning on. Now, they get dissolved after about a year. So, you know, they activate, 
the um, so this is Yeish's work. This is not me. They activate in, around around the American elections. Mm-hmm. Uh, then they act, and then um, about seven months later, a thing called a Chevron bur- burst turns on and starts to degrade them, and it builds and builds and builds and builds and builds until about a year later, and then it starts to decline, and then it's completely done in about 19 months. So um, basically, these these Jehovian seals and their trumpet pulses are active for that time, and then they're not pumping into the grid anymore. However, there are groups of people who are using those energies while they're available, like I described. They are personally taking them into their bodies and using them to activate energy centers to bring in the energies that those those structures are channeling on a higher level. So they're kind of internalizing those trumpet pulses and so forth. And there are particular religious movements that are doing this right now, particularly a lot of them in the States, a couple of them in Calgary, but like a lot, a lot, a lot in the States. So every time a trumpet pulse goes off, they like get an activate an activation and an upgrade. And um, I don't know if you remember earlier on in the work, like in the very early 2000s, we were the Stargates. We just did all this stuff, and then we started channeling these energies to support the the little bit of the energetic grid that we had because the grid system was so unstable. Well, like Q-sites, you know, tribal oh, yeah. shields. Yeah. yeah, they're doing that. They're doing the exact Reversed. same thing. Reversed. The, a lot of the NETS sites are getting overwhelmed and kind of like overrun and, and destroyed. So these people are turning themselves into power centers to run the net and using religious movements to kind of give this energy to other people. What are you saying? Without conscious knowledge, I like, they don't know what the fuck they're doing, but without conscious knowledge and everything, but like, that's what, what's happening. What are you saying with Afghanistan right now? Is that that's probably linked to some of this also. I don't know if it is. Um, to be honest, like, you know, you prop up a corrupt regime for 20 years and then you leave and then it falls like <sighs> gas. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of dramatizing around this right now. It's certainly suspicious timing, but you know, yeah. I mean, God, how many times has the Taliban, the head of the Taliban been assassinated? Like, I don't know. Like they are persistent. So I will say, not that I am a, not that I am in any way a supporter of the Taliban or anything else like that. I, I know many progressive people are kind of like sympathizing with them because they're against the American oppressors and everything like that. But you know, you know, they're they're still they suck. Like they're really awful people. So um, I'm not a sympathizer with them. But you I know, I don't think there's any women in the movement either, right? No, there's not. So you know, there's there's lots of problems now. I remember back in the day, George Bush saying he was going to Afghanistan to to deal with the um, – it's like, oh, my God, I'm going to Afghanistan to save the women. You know, I never quite bought George Bush the feminist. Just yeah. like, I, you know, there are conservatives now in the States, many in chaos, who are like, Paul, you have to be anti-Islam because Islam – people want to throw gays off – Roofs, roofs and everything. And I'm like, you know, I'm not buying conservatives as defenders of gay rights right now. I'm sorry. You're just trying to link me into your bias and I'm not doing that. So yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of my, that's kind of, it's a similar thing. It's like, you know, oh, it's like a situational justification for what you want yourself or other people to do. So um, yeah, no, I mean, but yeah, no, that you prop up an unpopular government, you know, and they're going to fall when you leave. Like, that's just it. Right. Shouldn't be a big surprise about it. I know, I know. And it's tragic and it was handled badly. And, you know, I've been an advocate for like, you know, many people want to shut the borders of Canada to Afghanistan because we we also were there for a long time. Canada yeah. was Kandahar province for the longest time. A few time. countries. Yeah, and I'm like, bring in every single Afghan who wants to come. Like, bring in all of them. Canada loves to think of itself as the good guy. And, you know, we have actually got a goddamn chance to do it. So bring in all these refugees who want to come here. It's like, all right, who wants to come? Now's your chance. We'll fly you here and everything. We we did it for Syrians. We can do it for the Afghans as well. I would be very much in favor of that. And we can finally be the good guy country that we always kind of want to be, but we really aren't. So I know you can't talk about vaccines that much, but on the KS level, can you talk about possibly how it's affecting activations, like people integrating? 
are receiving the activations? Do you see any interference with that at all? Or is that off limits also to talk about? I will say one thing. One either has faith in the vitality to overcome particular obstacles it may encounter, or one does not. I have faith in the vitality's ability to overcome any particular human-made obstacle, even if the methods are are uh, relatively not well known at the moment. Do you remember the slides that she was showing? I think it was either Katie Dale two or three, uh -huh. with the actual like the DNA strands, and then showing the fatality, yeah. this uh, black goo stuff over the epigenetic level, and then. Also showing the rainbow rainbow reservoirs activations and yeah. the frequencies on the DNA, how it's like protecting yeah. it and kind of making it uh, like a buffer in between it. Yep. And that was like 2015 or yep. something. Yep. There's some KSers that feel that that was the protection for this right now. That that was like what is kind of helping us right now through this agenda that's happening. Do you have so any thoughts on that? Maybe it was. Okay. It's not yeah. not for certain. Yeah. Nothing's for certain right now. That's, that's a hard one to tell, Chris, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It might be a leap. Yeah. But it seems like in a fail safe, I mean fail safe is fail safe, like they would have have, have like something ahead of time to be able to counter what was coming. Well, it's you know? the thing. I'm going to say quite openly, the Chevron system is a shitty system. You know, Trumpet Pulse allowed to do its thing for seven damn months, and then the Chevron Pulse starts. And then a year after it starts, then it finally takes it. Or well, depending like on how much frequency, right? Like how yeah, much yeah, is that there? Is, that, is a, that is an awful system. So it's better than nothing, certainly. But yeah, no, it's like if we're looking for things like, oh, oh, uh, so, yeah, I, I do also think that they are planning on doing more, um, more pulses, more like trumpet pulses than just the seven planned. I got the I got the intuition why I don't know how good this was, but that Calgary and New York were going to be additional ones. And I know we're not on that particular line on the planet, like all the all the all the things are in a straight line of um the ones going up and down chris those are latitude those are longitude Longi they're longitude yeah. um so they're, we're not on there but i did think they were going to do the that i don't you know calgary's not happening but i don't know about new york so i do think they wanted to do nine what are your thoughts on like the flashing the seals and the sun the kali Octate, all, all these the activations coming through the sun have you felt any of that any experiences with that or what are your thoughts i still don't think we've done any of those um those seed activations yet we haven't done the silver seed silver, or the gold yeah. silver seed yeah. or the platinum seed so like time frames I, think. I don't think we've actually done them yet so okay they start like 2025 or something yeah. well you know what remember when he, the first part of kddl like two or three i forget i forget which one it is now no it's three where she was like, oh my God, we would do the silver seed activations right now, but I got to catch a plane. I'm like, girl, do them now. Do them yeah. now. Do them now. Do them now. You will not get it done. This always happens. Like, oh, well, we'll do this. I'll, I'll, I'll do it right when I get you know, to Norway or to the Florida or whatever. Like, do it now. Because it never happens. And it didn't. I think we could have done them. The energetic conditions were favorable at that point, And, you know, they didn't happen. Well, they did one. I think it was the end of break, uh, cracking the shield. The Yeah the shell of contention right before he, they left or something. It was like five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. We did that. So I'm like, girl, just fucking finish it. Yeah. So a and lot of loose ends. Huh? That intuition has proven correct. Here we are seven years later. No, seven, six years later. So what do you feel that the Mahajra drawn us back? What, what, what do you make of that? Cause I mean, that's all external. Those are like, uh, density locks right that's all the vecca codes in that one code yep. yep so that's interfacing with our external reality i guess bringing the plasmas helping would, to make conduits i would state that i think it is interfacing with the light body yeah with that particular anatomy. level of energetic anatomy those things never went away we're all just integrating exactly. all of them together in a big like schlop 
and so forth. We call it the Uralay body. I think we call it the Uralay body now. Um, but, you know, we used to call it the Jade body or the Trua body or the Luminary body. Like, so we're, why we're, are people wanting to dismiss all the like, light body? Don't do that. Don't work with any of this. Don't, don't look at freedom teachings. Indeed. Okay. Why indeed are people wanting to dismiss that? It's all part of our anatomy. I don't want to go back to Swiss cheese, you know? Like, <laughs> Why indeed would people want to keep one part of your anatomy active and, you know, open to these things, but have you just, you know, not focus on integrating other parts? That may have a bit more to do with them than it has to do with the actual work. Well, she's explaining it because of the reversals, right? Through the violet, the violet plasma reversals. No, well, you so know, the actual safe. words of her, I remember the exact email she sent out on the old Alhambra group on Google and so forth. I turned on the notifications for it again. It's still active. Yeah, it is. So, um, but anyway, I remember that. And she said specifically that in situations of shield reversal, that um, you needed to do the plasma activations, specifically the August 2012 activations that are still there. You know, do the little technique sequence on Arrayas.com that's free. And then the stuff before was good. It'll be amplified. So yeah. it was not said to never do it. It was said, do this first, then do, do that. Do that first. Yeah. yeah. See that. And, so, and whether or not you accept that is fine. That is, you know, I'm not the police. I'm not, you know, the chaos police. Neither is the Asia or anything. If you don't want to do that, you know, fine. I'm not the police. Do what you want. But that, those were the actual things. And so the people who are taking that, interpreting that as to, you know, you should never do the plasma bot or anything before, you know, plasma body came up. That's. That's, that's bullshit. Well, I've made a few excerpts on this, like the long way and the short way home. There's mm -hmm. an implication that, okay, you want to do the old freedom teachings and don't do, don't work with plasmas. That's the long way home. Mm -hmm. You want to do the short way home, just do this only. And that's it. Did you well, the, resonate the, with that? Yeah. I, you know, I, I like them all. So, you know, people tend to be drawn to whatever they want to do. Like, you know, one of the most plasma e workshops is actually like the third one. It's um, Beyond the Veils from February 2000. You go and do that journey. There's plasmas everywhere. You can feel them. And the, the themes are very plasma e, like very femi and so forth. It's it's like, I honestly think at that point they were just about, they were like, okay, maybe we're going to fall, but call the fail safe. I think they were thinking about it then. They just 2003? You said? 2000. What? 2000 what? 2000. 2000 okay. zero 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 well that was the d12 yeah so i think they were thinking of calling something like fail safe then but they didn't you know okay think. but you know that was kind of it the most plasma e workshop is 2000 so yeah if you ever review that it's just it's super there but yeah i know that's that's kind of the thing i mean i you know i know there's people doing that and i think they're wrong so maybe i think um I remember once one person telling me that they went through one particular activation. It was really painful because they had a lot of reversals there. That might be the problem. <laughs> so, well, it's like the know. elemental clearing rooms. Like, yeah. have you noticed, a, like, whenever that level, like, whenever we're activating new levels of our plasma anatomy now, like they're they're like they they're covered with goo, like black goo. She's like, you need to clean them. You need to scrub this yeah. out, like the elemental clearing rooms. Mm -hmm. So that kind of implies, and that's the true level of the planet that mm -hmm. was kind of sludgy, you know? And yeah. Yeah. So it's already been kind of compromised or what do you feel with that? I don't know. I think everything's been compromised, Chris. Okay. I think it's been compromised all the way up and we are trying to rebuild it back to the eternal perfection that it once was. So, you know, can plasma be compromised? Like, absolutely. Yes, it can. We all know it can. Yeah. Like, you felt pl like, absolutely can. Can, like, there's this stuff after plasma. I just call it silver seed. Can that be compromised? Yes. So there is no like, flip side. Like, no, even I FEs or... No, this is the thing. It's like, you know, I have not yet found... I don't think we've quite read... I mean, Chris, what does ephemeral mean? Just ongoing? What is... What is no, it, it doesn't. You know what, what it means? It mean? temporary temporary Fleeting. like you know something that has an ephemeral beauty it is beautiful it does not last those i think they're better off than we are here but they're still finite has nobody ever mentioned that ephemeral does not mean like eternal 
I mean, I know somebody must have picked that up at some point that wasn't just as loud as me. So well, there was a there was a post on the Alhambra group somebody shared with me about Illuminaire, and they were yeah. asked how how to pronounce it, and the word loom, like looming, <laughs> was yeah. in there too. So that was interesting. Yeah. What I, I what is your experience with Illuminaire? Like you've been breathing it. How's that going? Good. Yeah. You know, part of my part of my technique run and that I do daily and so forth. It's nice. I think it is it. just another one of those like you know you smush all the stuff together and Illuminaire. So you know I think we're probably going to come up with eventually, assuming Aisha continues ever if she does, at some point we'll like put more into it and it'll be like super Illuminaire. And then yeah. we'll put even more in, and then it'll be super duper luminaire. I think right. it's off the spectrum. And that's, yeah. in fact, that's exactly how they described it, I think. There was this like combination of everything else, and boop, luminaire. Transposition, it's like emancipation. Like, it's like you're baking, and then you need to put all the stuff in, and then boop, a cake. So, yeah, that's right. kind of how it it. Do you know Marlon Griffith? I don't know if you heard the live stream that we did. He's kind of an old timer. He's been to all the workshops. Oh, wow. He kind of had a theory that like when she came out, like after failsafe, mm -hmm. or no, I guess with the J seals and the checkerboard matrix and the trumpets and all this that kicked back on is that she's, that this could potentially be like an old timeline that she's picking up on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, cause failsafe, I felt it kind of unusual too. Like failsafe is failsafe. We're done. Right. Let's just, let's anchor in. And now all of a sudden, all this stuff managed to get by the frequencies, either that, or we're just not anchoring correctly or, or we failed or we failed. Right. But if it's coming from the planet itself, it can't, it's, it's just us failing on top of the planet. That's ascending. <laughs> so it's, it's already happened. This is the thing, Chris. I mean, theories are theories yeah what one feels is what one feels what is you know perceived is another so you know the trumpet pulses are a real thing they're activating you know the way we imagined fail safe to be was that something like that wasn't possible apparently we were fucking wrong okay do you think it's possible that well apparently it's possible it happened well that's that's a perception thing do you think it's possible that she's just like going down to the last call, last call, and this message isn't intended for everybody, and other people may have were riding yes. a fail safe, you know. The message has never been intended for everybody. Like this conscious thing that we are doing now called chaos, we have a like I often compare it to imagine like Shakespeare gets thrown in a wood chipper, and then you get like a couple of like really good quotes that come out the other end. That's what chaos is. We have a fragment of a fragment that got through a wood chipper. We have so little of that organic vast amount of knowledge. And we, in our arrogance, assume that we know a whole lot of shit. Like, like we don't, we absolutely do not. I can't orb and fly and do all the Jedi magic shit that I think we probably, I like on some level, I know we should be able to do. I don't think you can either. And, you know, I don't think any of us can. I think we get a very small fragment of all of that. And that we in our arrogance are assuming that we know a lot because, you know, a small fragment is quite a bit when you had nothing before. So this conscious thing that we are doing is, oh, gosh, I lost my train of thought, Chris. What were we talking about? Just the fragment of, I mean, just a little blip of what it is really happening right now. She's oh, yeah. explained that, too. Like, yeah. we'll try to fit it in a PDF and a manual and stuff, but it's not even coming close to what what this is you know like well that's kind of the thing like we we really don't have a huge amount of knowledge of what's going on oh thank you it's about the work being meant for everybody um yeah. the work yeah. this conscious task was meant for very few people because it was not meant to be like the only way out we were meant to like our job the task appointed to us was to go do this energetic thing on the planet turn on these energy centers and then the planet does its own thing optimally if we get that happening, you know, we can have con some conscious knowledge of what's going on as well. Some being the key word there. And we can also like, you know, get mechanics like 
like they talked about in sliders where it's like, okay, well, this is how you kind of get your body to slide. So you can jump to other planets and everything else like that. And you can, you know, orb and do all that thing. Like that was, those were secondary goals. Primary goal, get this shit done on the planet. Then this, these particular processes can occur. These mechanical things can happen. And then, you know, a lot of the problems will gradually dissipate over the course of the next thousands of years. We did get that done. The secondary goals, however, and the conscious knowledge things seem to be lower priorities at the moment. So basically just doing all this work for the planet itself and just allowing and just and then make our own routes of passage after that. I mean, well, we don't got Asia to, and like I love Aisha and maybe she'll prove me wrong and come back and do like an intense series of things where we all learn how to orb and do all that. I don't see that happening. Well, it's been time uh, wave mechanics, right? Have you integrated all of time wave mechanics, KDDLs? Have you gone through all that? Gone through all of them. I'm doing my own thing too. So, What are you noticing with time after studying all the time wave mechanics? It's easier to look through it. Like it's easier to peel through it. Like, and Chris, I was looking, learning how to peer through time when I was like 13 and a little alien abductee. Like, it's funny, but like the aliens would teach me how to reach back and forth in time to sense things yeah. or and everything like that. Like, I can do that a little more clearly now, but I've always been able to do that. I have always gotten a sense of like other like parallel um, lives and everything else like that. You know, strangely enough, this one seems to be one of the better ones. My life in other timelines is pretty messed up. So, um, but yeah, no, that's, you know, I've always had those senses, Chris, so I haven't noticed, you know, maybe it's a little sharper, but I haven't noticed a dramatic change with the integrating of the time waves of, uh, in the recent work. Cause I've always been able to do that. Did you ever have experiences with other probabilities? Yeah. Like, Cause you know, sliders talks about all like the adjective and conjunction, yep. all these different. Yeah. And basically bringing it into the butt cell, the heroic probability. Yeah, that's not always fun. Did you see the Bardos? Did you have any of those Bardo experiences from the other incarnations, probabilities, yeah. and you feel the quantum come back so to this life? One of my parallel lives, I had a, um, I didn't go to university and I became a porn star and I was eventually a prostitute and like a stripper and everything else. And in that life, I committed suicide in 20, uh, 2011. And I did kind of like a weird bardo because I, that, that part of me just didn't like go off and like, you know, leave the planet and, you know, collect everything. It just collected all of its energy and jumped right into my body. I was like, what? Yeah. The, I had the what, same thing. What the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? Wow. You've had an interesting life. Um, so, you know, that, and that, um, would you say that was from doing sliders or did you have that before? Were you no, I never, tech? never had that before doing sliders. Um, no, that I, I don't know what that was. That happened. I don't know if it happened because before of chaos. If I've never had that happen before chaos, uh, maybe it was a little bit more conscious because of chaos. But you know, mine was I happening think. while doing like sliders three, sliders three, mm -hmm. sliders four. I started having these dreams, and I'd wake up. For, it, mm -hmm. it was more in a dream because I would feel the energy come rushing. And it's like you said, all the records and yeah. of, of that lifetime, you know, yeah. the emotions, and yeah. it was intense. Yeah, no, and you know that self was a drug addict too, and you know, so right. that was. Uh, I think, I think that, I think he um, got really messed up with drugs, and then just um, um, committed suicide uh, because of that, because he was so like there, and you know, getting a bit older, and not getting the clients he used to, and everything. So this I, subject I, alone is amazing. Just to, I mean, have interactions so that, like that with probabilities. So I have had those experiences. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of expansion in that to be able to open that up and realize that. Yeah. So, you know, you know, I'm like, okay, I know how that choice, if I made that choice would have worked out. Glad I didn't make that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what else, what else is going on with you in your life? Work and stuff. Working. Expansions. Yeah. Working, moving clinics. Your business That's expanding. Thing. Oh, it's a little slow nowadays, but it's always slow at the end of summer when everyone's on vacation, everything just dealing with dealing with COVID, dealing with life there, treating whatever people kind of come in to see me as and everything, and uh, just 
you know, honestly, my goal as a naturopathic doctor and a vitalist right now is to get people back to that kind of eternal, angelic, human, uh, human vitality. And I do still think that's possible, even with all the various things that are going on to the human vitality at the moment. You know, we may not have a perfect route there for people, but I think it's possible, and I think I'm getting closer. How do you mix, like, the KS teachings with your work? And, like, I don't. Clients? You don't at all? You don't run plasmas or frequency? I do, do not consider that ethical. Um, so okay. when I do work on people, I always bring in their team. So their team may be their religious groups or their, you know, discarnate family or their spirit family or whatever. And I bring in mine. Uh, mine is a team. Yeah, you know, there's some like, you know, there's some chaos healing people in there uh, as well. But there's also like a bunch of osteopaths and auricular therapists and homeopaths and, and acupuncture people and um, vitalist naturopaths and hydrotherapists, like all the people who've taught me in my lineages. And they come in and they do work on people. And we all do it together. I do not consider it ethical to really decide what kind of energies people should be running. I kind of, you know, their own groups are usually responsible for that. Well, there's some people that are even introducing like seed atom journey to their clients and like doing journeys live with them, stuff like that. You don't go that far into nope. it then, or even introduce KS to them at all. No, I don't. That's, that's Chris, that's religious evangelism. Okay. All right. That's not professional. Be taken that way. Yeah. That's not professional. You know, there is a professional ethic, and my professional ethic is that I follow where the patient's vitality leads me. I have some patients who are into that thing, and we talk about, like, chaos-like concepts and what I'm doing all the time, and that, that's, that's what their thing is. They love that kind of thing. We chat about it, and it's great. Uh, you know, but I do not introduce that with it because, you know, I'm a doctor. I'm Yeah, I was going to say it depends on the workplace environment, right, what they're already doing, everything in your I've, field. I've I'm a doctor, not an evangelist. Yeah, yeah. So it's my job to lead where their vital force takes me, wherever that is, and to help them get there. And being me, there's a perception of kind of where they're going. Like there's some patients who are evolving towards, you know, that kind of um, that kind of um, false light scenario, their universe. There's patients who are evolving towards that shadowy universe and so forth. And there's patients that are evolving with Earth towards, you know, eternity, towards, you know, the real kind of, eternal reality that this um, finite one emerged from and that's okay it's my job to help them get there as efficiently and quickly as possible and to get their vitality um, in the best place possible to get them there so it's not my job to decide where they're going right. so yeah. how, how have you felt with the KS group in general are you still connected with people or you felt yourself kind of drifting away from the group, I've just been away from a few people. Like a couple of people have embraced some of that QAnon stuff, and I I can't yeah. go there. Like I got the script. <laughs> uh, no, I got the. I actually got a death threat from uh, some of those QAnon people. I was um, so I think one lady proclaimed herself Queen of Canada, Romana Deluto, right. or something right. like that. There's a few queens, and, and I got a little thing there threatening me with execution if I continue to use a mask in my practice, and I'm like. Wow. You know, I am I'm up I'm up I'm a person who thinks that you threaten someone with execution there should be consequences. So I went right. and you know I know my my so three levels of government in Canada there's the the municipal which has councillors here there's the provincial which has your MLA and then there's federal which has your MP. Um so I talked to all of them like this happened what do I do? And so you know a bunch of like every naturopathic doctor got this letter. And so, you know, um, we're kind of seeking legal counsel about pressing charges on these people because okay. I do think it is not appropriate to threaten people with execution, moreover, from legal bullshit and everything else like that, but from execution um, to for following a provincial health mandate or anything else like that. Yeah, it's gone really far. It's just so gone off the deep end now. Right. You know, and this is an entirely separate debate from, you know, the merits of whatever p particular public health measures that there's a healthy place for debate there. I'm certainly not one of those people that, you know, is like, you know, the science says this and shut the fuck up. Like, no, no, everyone has the right to debate and discuss this and everything else like that. But that, you know what, threatening people with execution for following a provincial uh, a, a, a health mandate that's mediate, that's mandated by AH by the Ministry of Health and by their professional colleges. No, no, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. 
what were your thoughts and like feelings when COVID first hit? Like when it first came out, what were you seeing? Oh God. Oh my, whoa. Like I was overwhelmed and just yeah. hopeless and everything else like that, like everyone else. And then, then, um, you know, you just live with it. You're after. able to adapt to it. Yeah, I know. I mean, humans are surprisingly resilient. You just get used to it now. Do you do a lot of remote clients? Yeah, I, type I did a lot of telehealth, yeah. And now I'm back to mostly in person. And, you know, I'm comfortable with my level of risk uh, seeing patients in person. And um, I, st I do more telehealth than I did before. Like, it kind of really brought the potential of telehealth into my mind. So, you know, I, I do a fair bit more than I used to. But I still see a lot of people and do my thing. And being a regulated health professional, I got shut down during the first wave, but not during the second and the third waves. And um, okay. we're probably going to have a fourth wave in Alberta, and I'm not going to get shut down on that. So, Has COVID itself made an impact on you? people around you? Do you know anybody that has had it, like, that's yes. died yes. that much? Yes. Like a lot? I know a lot of people that have had it and relatively few that have died. Uh, I know some people have had long COVID and I've had actually very good success helping them. Okay. Would you say overall, I mean, people are displaying symptoms with it? Yeah. Most people. Yeah. Now, we do know from the research that there are also many other people that are not displaying symptoms. Right. Now, this is a function of the PCR tests. And um, one thing I will comment upon, however, I, I will comment on kind of some of the... Um, the idea is running around that the PCR tests are not legitimate tests, and that's not true. They are different. So previously, we used kind of a different test to, d to determine like rhinovirus and flu and so forth. And PCR is a lot more sensitive. It picks up thing. It picks up, you know, if you use the older kind of test, it might not pick, you know, pick it up as positive versus with the PCR, it gets picked up. That doesn't mean it's bad. That doesn't mean it's illegitimate. We'd probably find out a huge, like there was a lot more influenza and a lot more rhinovirus if we used those, the PCR tests to diagnose them uh, previously, which we didn't. They probably are going to start doing that soon. Uh, but that, that, that whole line of thinking that COVID was just overdiagnosed because of the PCR test is, is not correct. It was, you know, we just came to realize how many people are infected within with things um, and they just don't display any symptoms and everything, which is probably a natural phenomenon. It's like one interesting thing, you know where else that showed up? Ebola. There is a ton of asymptom, well, maybe not a ton, but there were a number of asymptomatic Ebola cases diagnosed uh, with antibodies um, in the Congo after the uh, the big outbreak in 2014 and they would like do blood work and they would, hey, you had Ebola. And they're like, the fuck are you talking about? I didn't right. have Ebola. So this happens with probably most infectious diseases, and it's just really become okay. it's different part of systems. It. Yeah, so it's you're comparing apples and oranges there. So right. this idea that PCR tests are um, are somehow illegitimate because they're more sensitive. Mm -mm. Well, speaking of tests, what about uh, people getting COVID from the test itself? Have you heard about that? Like the tests uh, having you, COVID? No, that's that's bunk. That's yeah, bunk. that's bullshit. Now, if you're just at a sloppy test site and the person, you know, there's other people there with COVID and everything else and they're not following precautions. And I, I do accept that, you know, masking and like particularly when you're gowning up and wearing a face shield and gloving and keeping your distance like that does reduce transmission. So if the person if you're you know there, but your people are like I remember once my brother told me he went to get tested for COVID and there's this guy there who's going up real close to everyone and like, you know, buddy, buddy with everyone. He's like, dude the fuck and right. to be fair like you know dude someone here has covid like keep your fucking distance so you know that it like unless something like that has happened it's probably you know i don't think the little jabby thing, or the little um you know the little stick that they put up your nose and so forth i don't think that gives you covid so the whole I, story of them finding all these tests that had covid on them have you studied any of that i've not studied that i but yeah, might have just added to the hysteria of plants and stuff or something. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. And what about those tests that go up like to the eye socket and stuff? It's pretty there intrusive. Are, some cases of people who were had osteopathic lesions, so that yeah. they disrupt their cranial skull mechanics. That's easily correctable if you know what you're doing. Okay, nothing major then. Not going yeah. to the pineal and all this. It's, yeah, no, no. Your pineal's inside your skull. <laughs> okay. 
so like okay so if you know cranial anatomy so like you've got there's actually this big hollow space kind of right around like here and it's got some sinuses and everything else and then you've got this solid thick thing of bone it's like um it's quite thick and then um on the pineals on top of that so it's like here right. in the brain case which is separated by this little wall of bone so you know it's not getting there okay. uh i don't think it's possible to get through there unless you've got like paper thin skull bones which is a separate problem i would think just a lot of hysteria and stuff is latched onto this right well, this is the weird thing. I'm in this place where I do not buy into a lot of the stuff of like the discourses of allopathic supremacy, which is what I term kind of the, the healthcare system as we know it, that is really dominated by conventional medicine and their discourses, which, which has tightened over the, their dominance and their control over, you know, um, the conversations going on discourses in social science terminology about health. Um, that, I, I don't go along with their their kind of ideas, but at the same point, I'm not going to go along with a lot of the bullshit I'm seeing because a lot of it's wrong. So, um, yeah, no, a lot of the stuff, especially the stuff that's floating around the alternative communities, I'm like, no, this is fucking bullshit. I remember once uh, one person, you know, telling me like, Paul, God damn it, I just can't talk with you. You're just so scientific. And I'm like, I am too much of a witch doctor for the scientists and now i'm too scientific for the people in in ks and the alternative community i just can't fucking i just can't fucking win oh like, that's good exploring both the polarities sir. That's good. well it's just i i remember it was amy um amy commented on that as well she's like jesus paul you can't fucking win god uh, so so plandemic thoughts Plandemic. If they, could, if they are capable of planning something in that grade of detail and that grade of success, we might as well just give up now. <laughs> okay. I don't actually think this was planned. This I came from a bat. I don't know where it came from. Um, the idea that it was a lab uh, thing or that it was a gain of function test is an interesting one. I don't know where it came from, but um, you know, I don't know when it got out either. Um, there were some naturopathic elders who were saying that they were treating this in as early as August 2019. So yeah. I don't know when, I don't know where, I don't know how. I do accept that it is a thing that happened and had these consequences and is a big deal and is actually quite serious. And, it is and serious. I'm, it is deadly, right? So that is kind of the thing. So where, who, how, like, I don't know. I wasn't there. Um, but when, eh, I have my, you know, I think it was, it may have been a little earlier and been circulating undetected and that's why it was so huge so fast. But, um, that's kind of the thing there, Chris. I, I, I don't accept a lot of the discourses that this is somehow planned to do anything. I mean, Chris, I've known something like this is going to happen since I got medical training. Now, what about the timing of the uh what was it, the eight year octant like things out picturing oh, this was like the virus beta lee virus and all that there may be something with that on some higher level but consciously in terms of what any particular a public official is or is not trying to do that's likely to be one of those i don't know if, is there a word for evil synchronicity and maybe an evil synchronicity of some kind perfect if, storm if, something yeah evil synchronicity it may be an evil synchronicity right. so yeah okay. but i'm not i do not think any level of public government really um had anything to do with this or feels like it could have gone a lot worse actually like it, it felt like maybe something peeking through parallel earth that was trying to come through a lot more devastating than what it was it, not to say that not to downplay it but yeah maybe it maybe that is true i don't know yeah but I knew something like this was going to happen eventually. It's just, this is the form it took. Have you studied about the frequency of oxygen absorption and 5G and COVID? No. Any of no. that stuff? Okay. Not really. <laughs> Can't have a conversation about that. I'm just now hearing about some of the... Yeah, I know. I'm not a fan of the 5G hypothesis. Okay. So, you don't yeah. feel it's linked to COVID or anything? Well, we had a really couple of shitty outbreaks in Calgary before 5g okay yeah like they like they tell you they're very proud of themselves the the cell phone companies and stuff we put 5g here and we put 5g there and we put the and everything and like they they didn't install it until 
October of like 2020 or something like that, or like it was, it was way after the first couple of waves in Calgary and so forth. So there really, the timing didn't work out for that. And yeah. So what about, uh, with kids, COVID, the Delta variant, is that more dangerous for kids? What are you seeing the impacts with children? I am no expert in this, but, um, you know, from the research, we know that kids typically have a much lower rate of complications, a much milder case of COVID. Okay. So that seems to, I mean, it's obviously a big debate here. Kids going back to school, they're going to wear a mask or not. People are, overall, it feels like in this area, at least we're just done with it. And there's a lot of fights, like parents and teachers there's and staff. Between being, well, there's a difference between being done with it, Chris, and it being done with you. Yeah, yeah. That's the debate, really. Yeah. So, you know, this has happened before, Chris. There's a very strong um, suspicion that there's a, there's a disease in, I think, 1890 called the Russian flu. And there's a very – and unlike the Spanish flu, the, the Spanish flu really got people in their prime very quickly. The Spanish flu um, had – or the Spanish flu, sorry, the Russian flu in 1890, but 28 years earlier, took people who were very old and very weak and had uh, obesity and all sorts of comorbidities and everything else like that. Uh, it tended to just pop up randomly, so there was asymptomatic spread. Other people, it was very mild, and there were long-term neurological sequelae, like that, you know, loss of taste and smell, and sometimes people had chronic fatigue and brain fag and so forth. Um, there was so there's a strong suspicion that there was like some kind of an animal jump of a cron animal coronavirus to humans, and that was that, and um, that was kind of the one, and that eventually that like that never went away that just became uh one of the normal flu viruses we've or one of the normal rhino i'm um, sorry coronaviruses that we have nowadays it's not an absolute it's not like they're not absolutely certain about it but there's a very strong suspicion about okay. that so this has happened before just not in a yeah. society that's quite so media media saturated and you know well before has, this it was like uh swine flu avian flu all these different animals and now it's yep. like supposedly linked to a bat i guess but no well chris this is completely new. there are zoonoses that have like an illnesses that jump from animals to humans all the time yeah it's just, like that's not an unusual thing at all so you don't see this as any agenda to like try to dictate or try to implement martial law or global agenda stuff any of that if they have, they failed. So um, I will say, I think that there is a, so my view, I think that movements and collectives do get tests as well. They get like, they have their growths and their progresses and their, you know, perhaps testing periods as well. The period from 2020 or 2016 to 2020 was a test, I think, of more conservative people as to whether or not they would embrace ethnic where they could stay away from the temptation of ethnic nationalism. They failed that test. And now we're seeing the opposite test. We're seeing progressives getting kind of this karmic test as to whether or not they can stay away from the coercive, using the coercive apparatus of the state. Um, and I think they're failing that test as well. I do believe that things like lockdowns and, um, you know, distancing and masking are, you know, they do, okay, they do have an effect and so forth. The debate, and it needs to be a debate. It's not just you know, people who people who have got you know scientific training, you know, dictating to the rest of everybody. Like you know, technocracy is not something I'm endorsing, but there does need to be an open debate about you know the legitimacy of these of these measures and when we use them and how when far we don't, it goes, how far it goes, why when we stop, when we start, and things like that. But you know, they there there is a tendency among progressives to use the coercive apparatus of the state to enforce this. And I think that that is being a little bit overused nowadays. Okay. That's what I would say about that. I'm having very big problems with that in Canada. All the parties that I traditionally support during the federal uh, election are doing that. And they are um, being quite coercive uh, in light of a certain medical procedure. And I cannot, um, I cannot participate in that. So I cannot endorse that, that kind of coercion socially. I am in favor of like, you know, in Alberta in November when there was like a lot of COVID cases, 
the, it was determined that private social gatherings were the primary vector of spread for those for COVID at that time. So they said, all right, you can't have anybody else in your house. I do think that is legitimate in times of emergency. Many people did not. There was debate, and that's fine. I do think it is legitimate for the government to tell people, you know, okay, there's this virus, it's it's dangerous, you know, we need to we need to control it. Don't do this anymore. Um, I think that is that there's a place for that, but um, you know, the 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 de- the kind of decline in the enforced decline, I would say, in debate over this and the extension of these social controls over more and more aspects of life and so forth. Um, I think is 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 not okay. Okay, there needs to be some kind of balance with this. Well, it's not even just balance. It's just you know there is there is a temptation among progressives to use the coercive apparatus of the state to be over regulatory of people's individual yeah. lives. It's very evident. It's happening. There's yeah. use for that. There is absolutely need for things like regulation and occasionally collective social action. Like you know, COVID proved it. Like you know. Sometimes you just got to tell people you're getting a goddamn ticket if you're not putting on a mask on like when you're on the train or something like that. Like that's I don't have a mind of a problem with that or like, you know, knock off the fucking, you know, Thanksgiving Christmas parties, please. Like just not right now. But um, you go too far with that too long. So forth. It's not it's not going to work out like it's there's there's a tendency towards over coercion there. So there's a phrase that Biden recently used the pandemic of the unvaccinated and I'm trying to figure this out myself. Maybe you could help me. If there's so many people that have been vaccinated versus people that are unvaccinated, why is there more outbreaks supposedly happening right now? I know there's this new strain, the Delta variant, but the vaccine's supposed to protect against that also. No comment. Oh, okay, that's going. That's getting. That's, that's crossing my line, Chris. <laughs> okay. All right. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just some unanswered questions I'm trying to put together. You know, that, that is, that is, um, that is one to look further into. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anything else you'd like to share? Anything else going on? I would encourage people to, I would encourage people to, I've come to think of Yeisha's work as a class, like getting a PhD or something like that. At the end of the class, you can go back and get another PhD and keep following your instructor or you can do your own work. I think many people within the shield are willing to gr- uh, do their own work and talk about it. And not in the sense of those chaos knockoffs and everything else like that, that you were discussing earlier in the sense of those chaos. Um, what's the word in the sense of doing their own true work, doing whatever it is, their particular commissions and their particular roles are, and maybe even sharing that and so forth. And I would love to see other people doing that. I'm doing it now uh, with all my remedies and stuff and my kind of work that I'm doing with um, with the human immune system and with everything else like that. I would love other people to do that too. I mean, maybe we just need to have a nice little graduation ceremony that we, you know, got my PhD in Yeshaology. Right. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, even then, I doing my own thing i will still attend if she ever does come on again i'll still watch her and learn from her because her perspective is fascinating i do enjoy hearing her speak and how she sees things going on and everything else like that and the activations she does are pretty fun but it is perhaps time for this community of people who've gone through this work to perhaps start standing on our own a little bit more that'd be a good message to newcomers also coming in just from now, an old timer go and do your research first. You know, you don't stand on your own. You don't stand on your own before you've done the basics. So, you know, it's like, you know, you don't start writing your own thing when you're doing the ABCs and, you know, trying to read, you know, a teeny bopper novel. You don't try writing like a beautiful novel when you're just reading teeny boppers or, you know, spelling complicated words. So what would you suggest to newcomers? Like, that's the main question I get is where do I start? Like what in the world? This, this is huge. Like where do, where do I begin? What would you tell them? So what I begin with or what I would recommend beginning with is that little technique sequence on Arrayas.com. Yeah. That's a good one to begin with. You won't understand a thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. Uh, then I would start at the beginning. I'd start with uh, Cathara 1. Then I'd do Cathara 2, 3. Cathara 4. 
uh, I would do the slider series and then I would um yeah and then I would probably do uh, I'd probably April 2013 and then I do KDDLs okay so Chismatic I think April yeah definitely I've, I've really been encouraging Chismatic that's packed it feels very yeah. relevant right now there are these regular series of update workshops that Aisha had every so often for just people who are just coming into the work and they could get yeah. cut off on. Do those in order. They're actually really, there's, it's not that much in there and they're really good. And I think it was Cathara 1, Cathara 2, 3, Cathara 4. Uh, I think it was, oh God, what was it? There's a couple of, but you know. Sliders, sliders 8 was good. Yeah, Sliders 8, thank you. Sliders KDDL 8. KDDL 1. The L one was another one. Good April, recaps. April 2013 was another one. So there's like six workshops yeah. in there. You get actually a pretty good idea of what's going on. And then just, you know, by then you'll know what you want it. You'll kind of know what you're interested in and then go do that. So do you feel flame body still? Okay. I do not have a problem with flame. I haven't done it in a couple of years, but you know, yeah. that initial plasma thing by anyone's definition, there shouldn't be anything wrong. And if there is, we should have a chat about that. If right. whatever's gone wrong is so terrible that even the new energies can't overcome it, well, we yeah. need to do that. And this isn't necessarily saying, yeah, we, we need to have a chat about that. We need to, yeah, that's something we need. If that is the case, then we need to know and we need to hear from Asia about that. That is an announcement to make. Yep. So, yeah, there hasn't been any so far. So, yeah. So, okay. But then we did hear about that at the time for a number of months so yeah <laughs> a little delayed reaction on some of it uh, no we didn't even hear about that like you know we knew this is a problem in like august of 2011 and then we didn't hear about it until like april 2012 that so. started in 2008 <laughs> right yeah so i'm like yeah the reliability for things like that has not been great and morocco it's kind of another subject demon fest <laughs> Didn't have so, a heads up on that either. Apparently started in 1999. Yeah. So, you know, like, yeah. yeah. These are things to discuss with people beforehand. I am not up. I, there's one thing Yusha has always been. She's like, oh, my God, the Guardians won't tell us what to do. They won't tell us something if, you know, we will. Don't if have we're, remedy if they for don't it. solution and we'll panic. Yeah. I'm like, girl, I am not going to panic. I would actually quite rather know so I could take sensible precautions. It's like, yeah. you know, oh, it's kind of like that argument about COVID. Oh, people are just freaking out. No, a lot of people are taking sensible precautions here. A lot of people are taking unsensible precautions. But, you know, I'm a believer in honesty. And then, you know, people can deal with it afterwards as opposed to, hey, afterwards, like, ah, this happened. Like, <laughs> and that's the argument, right, about what's going on right now is that, you know, they just, Yish is not talking to us because they just don't have a solution. And that may be true. I just think that's bullshit. Talk to us. There may not be a solution. We do have the right to at least know what's going on and like, okay, Maybe we might do certain activities or not do certain activities because of these set of circumstances that are not within our power to alter at the moment. Right. That's how I approach things. So. I have one more question on COVID, actually. Have you seen any cases that were that you would say were psychosomatic? Oh, yeah. No, there's tons of people who are just freaking out and everything else. And then you said, like. And panicking and so forth, like, oh my god, I've got uh, hyperventilating. Uh, it happened, you know, it happened to me one day. I had like a, a nose, I like I had like this thing happening with my nose right around the start of it. I'm like, holy shit, I've got COVID. Right. You know, I want to get tested, not COVID. So, like Chris, fear does make people have some problems and things like that. You know, that's that's perfectly normal and natural and okay. You think some of that's intermingled with this? It kind of amps up. Yeah, Any no, absolutely. It. Society really amped up. Like, we all kind of collectively freaked each other out over this. And, you know. Okay. You know, so it doesn't necessarily mean COVID's not real or it's all there. Yeah. Or it's all like, you know, this. But, you know, we absolutely created a mental environment that was quite scary for people. And, you know, that does get physically expressed sometimes. All right. Uh -huh. All right. Any other closing thoughts? 
Nope. Minutes, I think. Just please edit out those first five minutes when I didn't know I was on. Absolutely. I'll do that for Thank production. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Paul. Chris, it was so nice to talk to you again. You too. Bye.